G'day all, Charlie here. Right, so the radio is now complete. And I just want to do sort of one last final video, sort of just, I guess, recording some of my uh, final thoughts before I shift focus on to what I'd like to do next. So the power amplifier is now mounted on the radio. Um, plenty of space there. Uh, in doing so, uh, I had to make a few minor changes, and I'll get to those in a sec. So at the moment, the radio is producing uh, a good healthy 5.3 odd watts, um, which I'm certainly quite happy with at this stage of the game. Um, we may revisit that in the future, but for now, that's fine. So in... Right, so a couple of things. So we put the... or well, I put the, the parent amplifier in, and the thought was always going to be to have the, the second output that's clocked to from the SI5351 um, through that little red wire there going to the input of the amplifier that was always going to be on and then the key was going to essentially apply VCC to the power amplifier to turn it on and off um, and the thought there was that because the receiver is running 24-7 that the output power going out the antenna through this green one here um, I would detect some of that and then that would be used for cytone which we're hearing there um, now of course if I would put a little bit more thought into that that was never going to work because coming out of clock 2 as a continuous um, frequency at the frequency we're tuned to so the, sens the sensitivity of the radio and the fact that there's only what <laughs> a whole three or four inches uh, in the whole radio itself meant that um, there was a continuous wave um, being received coming out the speaker. It was continuous. So I had to rethink um, how to do the keying. So in the end, what I settled on, um, and I found one of these in the junk box, which I quite like using anyway, which is a, a manual PTT switch to flip from transmit to receive. So now the way it works, the PTT switch here, the transmit receive switch, um, toggles the relay and puts the radio into transmit. The key down here, all that's doing now is providing an earth to the microcontroller. The microcontroller is sensing that it's been earthed and in software it's turning on and off the output of clock 2. That means over here in the power amplifier, through this red wire running here, we have a fixed 12 volts uh, on transmit. So the amplifier is on and just waiting for a keyed signal to come in to the front of the amplifier, gets amplified through the low, so, yeah, through the low pass filter and back out the yellow wire and out the antenna. And that's what we're seeing here. So, so at the moment we're on receive. Um, and I've got a, a, the ability to listen to the 700 hertz to be able to zero beat what's coming in. And that's what we're hearing here. Now, on transmit, um, I wanted to drop that side tone right down uh, to not make it so loud. So what we have here on the side is a 300 um, microfarad capacitor. Now, let me just double check that value. I think it's a... It was a, sorry, I didn't think 300 sounded right. It's a 330 microfarad capacitor, of course, um, standard value. That, if you can sort of see down there, is essentially uh, on the output of that product detector, that uh, SBL1. So the output is being, I just tapped into that through that 330 microfarad capacitor, and that's being switched to earth um, on transmit, uh, which is essentially drops the level of the audio that's going into the audio amplifier down here uh, considerably. Uh, so I've got the dummy load plugged in, so you can hear that, that's just a normal receive. And if I go to transmit, you can, you can just hear it no more. Um, which is nice and pleasant to hear uh, while you're transmitting. So that's how we solved, or how I solved that one. Um, and that was essentially it. So nothing else has changed in the radio. So just it was just a, uh, a simple change to, the, to a couple of lines of code, that, like I say in the Arduino, to to enable that. So that's the radio done and dusted. Um, the next steps now for that would be to uh, 
when we go tramping in New Zealand, quite often our uh, the, the available room to put up a large antenna, um, it's, it's not easy to do, especially with a big half wave dipole. So I do want to play around some more with um, random wire antennas. Um, uh, so I think the next sort of for this particular radio here, before summer comes around, we get back into tramping, is to is to look at some kind of um, some kind of random wire antenna and an antenning tuning unit just to, to bring that back down to the desired 50 ohms that this wants to see. Anyway, so yeah, that was that was certainly quite enjoyable that. Um, I think uh, moving forward, yeah, I think the best thing to do now is basically take that into the field. Um, probably do some transmission tips here if I can. Get the old reverse beacon network, see if I can uh, ping that. Uh, conditions haven't been overly good here in the last couple of days. Oh, and yeah, only other thing too, which I just spotted there. Um, I elected to place, you can just see it there, and I'll see if I can zoom up, um, on the output of that amplifier, um, I've got two essentially back-to-back -back, uh, Zener diodes, um, each side is made up of two 27 volt um, Zeners, so 27 volts on this side times two, and 27 volts times on that side. Uh, I just wanted to, to make sure that I didn't exceed that 60 volt breakdown voltage for um, those MOSFETs. Um, and they don't come into play with the voltage levels we're looking at. So at the moment this thing's generating about 46 volts or so uh, across a 50 ohm load. Um, so it's just a bit of uh, protection there hopefully for uh, any kind of extreme mismatches on the antenna. Right, so I'll leave it on the, I'll, I'll leave that there. Um, like I say, just a quick video just to wrap up where we got to. Um, and I'll probably look, look putting up another one this afternoon uh, with some initial thoughts and ideas uh, for the next radio. But um, anything, any questions sing out? Um, and I'll just reiterate again, look I, I'm absolutely no expert in any of this kind of field. Um, the, whole, the whole idea of me putting these up is to, is to sort of document what I did and, and I've said this many times, right or wrong. Um, hopefully to encourage others to, to give it a go. Um, it's been said many times, we live in a, a, fast, a fantastic time here where you can buy you know, these components, especially these, you know, these, the, the, um, the DDS here and the microcontroller and even this display here for, for next to nothing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great time to, to play around with homebrew um, and, and this whole idea, like I say, the whole idea of the, the video series is just to, to help encourage others to, to give it a go. Uh, if I can do it, then anybody can. Um, that's the theory anyway. Right, 73 is all. Um, I'll leave it there. And I'll put another video up this afternoon um, thinking about what I'd like to do next. Okay, 73s.